All right. Well, over the weekend, obviously the, one of the biggest stories uh, for everyone, not just in sports, but Hurricane Ida made landfall as a Category 4 storm yesterday. And we're sending all of our thoughts and prayers to everybody dealing with the storm. It is at the point where it's been downgraded to a tropical storm. But it was so strong. I saw this this morning that it reversed the Mississippi River's flow. The mm. storm surge pushed the river up to seven feet. And while it was up there, it slowed it down. Did a little flipperoo. That's incredibly uncommon, which just speaks to how big this mm -hmm. storm was. And we'll continue to see its impact. Um, but just hoping that things start to, to dwindle down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And as we get out of it, that the damage is limited. We've already yeah. seen quite a bit, though. Yeah, August 29th, man. That's like a date that it's, it feels as if, like... Um, the hurricanes all seem to come, you know, on, you know, on those years, but in, for those impacted areas like New Orleans, Louisiana, you know, outskirts of Texas and, you know, the coast of Mississippi, you know, they've been hit, you know, hard in these last like what, 25 years of just going, of going through with some hard hurricanes. And I know that, um, you know, when you're watching the weather channel and all the news that, that, that we're covering it, it was good to see people, a lot of people did evacuate. I, I, you know, I know that a lot of people were in traffic and for longer amounts of traffic time than you would normally get to. But um, I'm happy to see that a lot of people, you know, were safe. And you know, now I know New Orleans has no power. The whole entire city has no power. Al Roker went viral for over the weekend for his, for his piece on Meet the Press. You thought that he was going to literally fall over. It looked like he could barely stand up. The water was like the waves were crashing on him. That they were he was getting pounded and hit. And for for everyone covering it, number one too, it's like I know this is like a scary time. So just think about people and and you know start figuring out ways now how we can help those in the areas, the communities that were impacted. Yeah, if you come for Al Roker, he will drop you like a bag of dirt. Did you see that clip? It was of so him? Funny. <laughs> it was incredible. I mean, Why when do you we hear need that? when you hear Al Roker saying screw you on national mm -hmm. television you're like whoa we've hit the rails at this point i agree with you cj and as someone who in the past like i would be sitting here assuming that chris was about to jump in his car and drive down to louisiana to help his company's coverage of the storms in the past few hurricanes that's something that he's done there's something to be said about the aftermath of it i will never understand putting reporters in the middle of a storm but when you do have a meteorologist who is actively seeking to share that experience i think it's fine if there's 100 percent consent on the part of the reporter or in this case al roker or all of those amazing people who work over at the weather channel but it is tough to see because it feels so dangerous mm -hmm. think about like not even just for like these last couple of weeks we've always we, we bring it up when it's like weather always the war what's going on right now in afghanistan when you see the reporters who are like putting their lives in jeopardy, not just for, you know, it, I, I, for me, I always think about, I think for a lot of these reporters and maybe not the case for it for all it's to, is to help get the information out there is to help. Like I want to make sure people know what's going on or, or for them to see, or maybe, maybe someone that's in that community will turn their TV on for that last second. and will say, you know, we, we really got to go. Now we see what's going on. We might not be able to, we're not, we might not be on the coast. We might, we might be 10 miles from the coast. And sometimes you feel like, Oh, it'll be fine. Like we'll be fine. And so, but it is it is one of those like I am not a meteorologist. I am, you know, I cover sports. I chose to cover sports for a reason. To not but, stand in hurricanes. Right. To not to not do that. But so I do a big perk of the job. I do feel for them. I do I, I do feel for them, but it it takes it's gotta take a lot of courage. It takes a and, special kind of person. And you love your job. You obviously like Super. have to really, really love your job. Somebody's going to get hurt one day, and then we're going. Don't to wish that upon. Yeah, don't that's wish that upon. Don't wish that upon anybody. They put so many. They, it's common sense. They put you so many hurricane, safety you measures hurt. in effect, and that is a piece that comes with it. But no, we hope that everyone stays as safe as possible. How it affects sports, we saw over the weekend that the Saints final preseason game they were supposed to host the cardinals the cardinals were in the air did a little flipperoo went back to arizona saints meanwhile moved down to dallas where they will practice at at&t stadium this isn't anything new they've had to do this before and mm -hmm. then lsu who opens their season next saturday at ucla they moved down to houston they'll practice there before heading out to los angeles later this week so there's plenty of teams that it affects along the way as well it just it always feels like it coincides with the start of football season. Yeah, yeah, and I hope that like, all for for all of these sports and these teams that they made sure families were okay, employees were okay. You know, just as much as the, these athletes because it takes like a whole. And I know like LSU 
it's it's four hours away to go to Houston. It took them ten hours on a bus just to get there. You know, due to the amount of traffic of people trying to evacuate and leave. But now we're we're seeing the you know the effects of it. All the rain too. I know that's what when Which Chris is, was stuck in the airport this morning. I was like, you have to get on a flight right now. <laughs> like you need to be here. When is it supposed to hit? When is uh, the rain supposed to hit here? Soon, I think around noon okay. here. This thing is going to blow all the way to Cincinnati, which, Oof. dear, what? What? Yeah, yeah I think so we're in speaking flash, of soggy fries. Yeah, oh I think it's going to be a we're soggy in, week. We're in flash flood warning until today. So everyone be careful, no matter and, where you are. And Middle Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. just had to deal with a flash yeah. flood. That took a couple of lives, unfortunately. Flash floods are nothing to play with because all that water comes down from the sky all at once. And you just don't know how it's going to affect you. And you're in Memphis, God bless them, the drainage situation here is not necessarily the best. You may as well, when it rains too much, it's Lake Mariah. No longer Mount Mariah. It's a lake. So be careful when you drive. Please don't drive into standing, standing water. water. Yes. I repeat, do not drive into standing water. If you see it, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't do it. I've seen so many videos of people, even with like barriers up as they were evacuating uh, Louisiana, people mm-hmm. just driving around the barriers. And I'm like, it's there for a reason to protect you. I, I can't imagine. Yeah. I would be the person who would like take one little nudge into said standing water and my entire car would sink. So well, good thing you're not gonna do that. No. Not, not. today. Not no, today. We give good advice here on Rising Crime. <laughs> good life advice. Is there any off season storyline that you're most interested in when it comes to the NFL or college football? You know what? I was intrigued, you know, because I had a chance. Like, I mean, I covered the NFL, so, you know, the Saints. Like, mm-hmm. right now, you know, going through Ida with this team again. Like, I was covering the Saints when Katrina hit. So, it's like nostalgia in, 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 a, in a concerning way, right? Like, it was this same time, you know, in, 19, I mean, 2005 when, when, when all of this happened. And, you know, my first, um, my first time actually living overnight for, like, an extended period in Memphis was on the back end of Hurricane Katrina because I was down there with the Saints and, and, and Southern Miss. And Southern, the Saints went to San Antonio and University of Southern Miss got bought up here. So they shifted me onto Southern Miss and I came up here to Memphis and stayed at what used to be the Marriott downtown. I think it's the Sheridan now. Um, I stayed there for a week and a half following that team. And, you know, it was my first taste of being in Memphis at that time. So I'm looking at the Saints and how they're going to make this adjustment again. And it's heartbreaking because I remember driving through the streets of New Orleans right after uh, Katrina. Um, I remember what it was like to lose power for in my house for a long time. Um, so that, that's a storyline that I don't want to look forward to, but mm-hmm. I'm monitoring that. Mm-hmm. Peace and prayers out to you know, New Orleans and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I got a ton of family and friends down there. So I know New Orleans lost power completely last night. Um, you know, so like I said, peace and prayers down there to them. I hope everyone is safe as possible.